The Ugandan government has granted amnesty to the Alliance for Democratic Forces, also known as ADF rebels. Information Minister Chris Bariyumosi, however, said the government won't stop pursuing the rebels until they surrender. Reporter Mugumi Davis Rakarinji has more from Kampala, Uganda. The announcement was made by Uganda's Minister of Information, Chris Bariyumosi, on Wednesday afternoon. So we have put a window of amnesty that in case they are those recruited into the terrorist ranks of ADF who would want to surrender and uh, abandon that senseless fight against innocent Ugandans, then they will be given amnesty in accordance with the law. The ADF is considered by both Uganda and the U.S. as a terror group affiliated to the Islamic State. The rebel outfit, formed in the late 1990s, is said to have killed thousands of people in Uganda and the DR Congo. More recently, the government said the ADF were responsible for killing two foreign tourists and their guide in Uganda. In June, the rebels killed dozens of students and abducted others in the southwestern district of Kasese, which borders DR Congo. Solomon Asimwe, a professor of international relations and security, welcomes the amnesty extended to the rebels. These are Ugandans, uh, much as they are terrorists, and they have issues they are raising. Therefore, it is incumbent upon the state to uh, look for ways of uh, reaching these people. As so you deny them the recruitment mechanisms they have by maybe moving some people or answering back rightly whatever they are, they are asking, to me, in the right direction. Uganda and the Ara Congo recently entered into a pact to fight the rebels. The hunt is still on and they will be pursued until when they get defeated the way Kony and the Lord's Resistance Army was also defeated. The Lord's Resistance Army, another rebel outfit, mainly operated in the northern part of Uganda and was responsible for thousands of deaths before they were scattered to South Sudan, Chad and Central Africa. The government has not provided the timeline for the expiration of the amnesty. For VOA News, I am Mugume. The M23 rebels in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo are denying they attack East African Community Regional Forces, resulting in the death of a Kenyan soldier earlier this week. Instead, M23 spokesperson Lawrence Kayuka tells me DRC government forces have been attacking M23 positions and civilians in violation of the ceasefire. The things that are happening lately, we have a trend of attacks against the aircraft, which is East African Regional Forces. We have the first attack happen in Tongo against the Sudanese contingent. Uh, the second one happened in uh, Rukoro against the uh, Ugandan the UPDF. And the third one happened yesterday against the Kenyan contingent. These are DRC government forces that are attacking all this region of East African regional forces. So uh, these attacks came from the DRC forces, which is a coalition of um, FRDC, which is Congolese National Forces. You have FDLR. They are in Terramwe, the people that are committed to genocide in Rwanda in uh, before. You have mercenary, uh, European mercenary from East Europe. So this attack has nothing to do with uh, M23. But your, your forces have also been accused by the DRC government of being responsible for killing civilians. Uh, I think anything you heard from DRC government is actually a massive lie. No long ago, you actually know yourself because you've seen it through the social network. Over 160 people killed by DRC government in the town of Goma. We don't kill people. People come to our end. We had people in uh, Abuiza that came to seek refuge from us, running away from the DRC government coalition forces. Uh, those people were attacked again. And we have, at the moment, a crisis in Abuiza that we are actually calling all the time humanitarian. And if you see even the communique released yesterday, we were talking about 
people being abandoned by the community of humanitarian. Lawrence, there should be a ceasefire. And uh, it seems that uh, no one, like your group, is respecting the ceasefire. I think this day is, is not like um, uh, our father's time where maybe there was no record. Uh, these days you can go to internet without, selling, uh, without telling the name of any operators. You can have information. The M23 signed the ceasefire on the 7th of March, as requested by the region and international partners. It was requested by everyone to sign, by the DRC government, never signed. There's no evidence of it anywhere. The M23 still believe a reiterate when now the need for a peaceful resolution of ongoing conflict. That was Lawrence Kayuka, political spokesperson for M23 Rebels. He was speaking with me from Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. A court in Kenya has extended orders blocking the deployment of Kenyan police to Haiti to lead a UN Security Council approved mission to combat gang violence in the Caribbean nation. The High Court on Tuesday said that it would rule on the case on November 9th. Former presidential candidate Ekuru Okot filed a petition on October 9th against the deployment of Kenyan forces, urging that the law allowing the president to do so conflicted with articles of the constitution. Okoti's petition also faulted President William Ruto for agreeing to lead the international peacekeeping mission while Kenya struggles with security issues arising from militant attacks and most recently ethnic clashes. The UN Security Council resolution drafted by the United States and Ecuador authorities the force to deploy for one year with a review after nine months. Kenya's National Assembly has yet to, to schedule a debate on the motion to deploy the contingent, which is expected to be made up of about 1,000 police officers. The non-UN mission would be funded by voluntary contributions, with the U.S. pledging up to U.S. dollar 200 million. A Kenyan soldier from the regional East African force deployed in the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo was killed on Tuesday in fighting between pro-government armed groups and M23 rebels, the force said on Wednesday. No armed group has directly targeted the Kenyan contingent since its deployment. This source added that, denying reports that Kenyan soldiers had been ambushed. According to sources on the ground, the front was calm on Wednesday morning. However, the day before, violent clashes broke out some 20 kilometers north of Goma between the M23 rebels, the Congolese army, and groups of fighters calling themselves Patriotis Wazalendo. The army engaged a fighter plane against the rebels. M23 fought the Wazalendo with mortar fire. A shell landed near Kenyan soldiers deployed to protect civilians, explained the ESCARIF source. On Monday evening, the Congolese army announced the death of an East African Community Regional Force soldier without specifying his nationality but accusing the M23 of being responsible for the fatal shot. The M23 is mainly Tutsi rebellion supported by Rwanda according to many sources, which took up arms again at the end of 2021 after several years of democracy and has seized vast swath of territory in North Kivu in the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo. The East African force, which includes Kenya, Uganda, Burund, and South Sudanese soldiers, has been deployed in the region since November 2022.